Hey there, it's Mr. Polarski again. We're going to take a look at part three of section 4.1. We're going to look at another proof where we're going to be proving two triangles congruent using the definition of congruent triangles. So let's go right ahead and get into it. Here we have uh, our diagram and our given information, as I said in part two of lesson 4.1. It's always best uh, if your book gives you a diagram that has the congruence marks on it. Make a diagram yourself and mark the congruent parts as you put them into your given statement in your proof. The first statement of any proof is the given statement, which is just repeating the given from the original problem. So in this problem, we're told that segment WX is congruent to segment YX. And then we can go ahead and mark that, that WX is congruent to YX. And next we're told that WZ is congruent to YZ. And again, once we write that down, we can mark it on our diagram. So again, we can see, like the previous example, we are given that two of the corresponding sides are congruent, so we will be left with justifying how XZ is congruent to itself. We will do that in the second step of this proof. Next part of our given statement is that angle W is congruent to angle Y. And now that we have that written in our given statement, we can go ahead and mark it. And finally, we are told that segment XZ is congruent to segment, or is not congruent to, but is perpendicular to, I apologize, perpendicular to segment WY. And so we'll go ahead and mark that in our diagram. And we'll get on with our proof. What we want to do next is I want to establish, I think, that the XZ is congruent to itself. And from the last example or last proof I did in part two of this for section 4.1, we should be able to know or we should know that segment XZ is congruent to itself because of the reflexive property of congruence. The next part of this proof is going to be establishing that angle XZW and angle XZY are right angles. And that's from the definition of right angles, or the definition, uh, yeah, definition of right angles. Right angles are formed by two perpendicular lines or line segments. Now that we've established that they are both right angles, we can establish that they are congruent. We can write then that angle XZW is congruent to angle XZY. And that's because of a theorem, all right angles are congruent. So uh, they're marked right. We could then also take the time to mark them congruent, but uh, really no need to do that. Let's uh, move down a little bit, give ourselves some more room to complete this proof. Now that we know that two pairs of angles are congruent in two triangles. These angles here that I have marked, this angle W is congruent to angle Y and angle XZW is congruent to angle XZY. We can conclude that angle WXZ is congruent to angle YXZ. And that's because of the third angle theorem. That would 
be because of the third, again, the third angle theorem. Something that I forgot to mark is that XZ is congruent to XZ. I did state that because of the reflexive property. Then you can see from the diagram all three pairs of corresponding sides and all three pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So we can, or we have uh, established enough to prove that triangle WXZ is congruent to triangle YXZ. And again, that's because of the definition of congruent triangles. And we'll see the proof here in its entirety. Pretty simple. Given statement, we established that the third side is congruent to itself because of the reflexive property. We were only given that one pair of corresponding angles were congruent, but we were told that this segment was perpendicular to this segment, so we established that angle XZW and XZY are right angles. Therefore, they are congruent because all right angles are congruent. And then because of the third angle theorem that this angle WXZ and this angle YXZ were congruent. And finally, uh, that was enough to establish that the two angles were congruent through the definition of congruent triangles.